there's there's no doubt that the timing of this visit is extremely poor. Um, you know, the uh, tension between the US and China has rarely been worse. And then you get this on top of this. So it, you know, by, by no stretch does this help the, the economic backdrop uh, for Asia. I mean, what, we, what we're seeing now is, I mean, Asia is looking as a result of this, like, you know, a somewhat un, unstable region, region that people perhaps from Europe, perhaps from US are looking at and going, you know, do we want to be investing here? The stuff going on, there's a sort of residual worry about, you know, what Kim Jong-un says from time to time in North Korea as well. The China spat continues to go on. It doesn't help those investment flows. It doesn't help growth in the region. Um, and all of this, uh, this sort of political ruction, it basically adds costs. I think, as your, your uh, earlier speaker was saying, it adds costs to doing business in the region, doing business within the region and elsewhere out in the globe, which, of course, doesn't help the growth outlook. So essentially what you're saying is going to trigger outflows, whether it's investment or business, uh, out of this region because of the noise we're hearing uh, from this visit. Well, whether it's outflows or just net inflows diminish, it certainly doesn't improve the situation. OK, Rob, considering everything that we are currently seeing right now, because you've got everything mm. that you're mentioning when it does come to this Pelosi visit, you've got the deteriorating situation in Europe on the gas front, Putin weaponizing the gas yep. supplies. Where do you invest then? Because it's not like the US isn't with its own concerns when it comes to the recession prospect. Yeah, well, I think until uh, until this morning, I would have said, well, you, you pile into U.S. Treasuries. And of course, <laughs> that wouldn't have got you very far, would it? Uh, because right on the back of that, you've you've got, uh, you know, all the Fed speakers you mentioned daily, uh, Mester uh, Evans coming out and saying, right, we, we haven't stopped yet. But actually, I mean, that that's that story probably does still hold true. But it looks like we have to go through a correction first. I mean, the market, I mean, you talked about this. This is, this is fascinating to me. It, look, the market has just got way ahead of itself. I mean, it's pricing and the easing before we've even seen what the what the recession looks like, hmm. uh, the recession that you know, could well be hitting. So really, really interesting. And, and as for payrolls on Friday, I mean, how do you interpret that number? Is a good number a good number? Or as I would, would prefer to think, does a good number say, well, this just tells you that the Fed has got that much more work to do because it ain't going to get inflation down just by putting up rates. It has to slow the economy. It'll in all likelihood have to push up the unemployment rate uh, and, and slow down the rate of job creation in order to be able to squeeze the demand side enough to get inflation down. So, yeah, I mean, re reactions and, and, and ructions just likely to continue, I think, for, for weeks, if not months.